Do you ever wonder what happens when the police leave? Crime Scene Cleaners are private companies that handle the cleanup after the police are gone. Spalding Decon is one of the nation's largest cleanup companies handling the aftermath of homicides, suicides, decompositions, hoarding, and much more. These are our stories. Uh, we're in uh, Beaufort, Georgia today helping out a family. The brother passed away and left the house to his brother. You know, he walked in and he, he seen the uh, the mess that was here. You know, he just said he just needs help. These brownies, 2018. Your year on it? 1912. Another newspaper says Nixon quit. He fed two cats for a while and I think they were blocked from going to the litter box. So they, you know, went where they had to and it ended up being everywhere in the world. Hi everybody, this is Brian at uh, Athens Spalding Decon. Uh, we're in uh, Beaufort, Georgia today helping out a family. Uh, the, the brother passed away and left the house to his brother. You know, he walked in and he, he seen the, uh, the mess that was here and he just tried to do it himself and he just reached out, called me and you know, poured his heart out to me and we you know, talked for 30, 40 minutes and you know, he just said he just needs help. So uh, that, that, that was the main thing for me is I, I told him and reassured him that we are here to help, we'll take care of him no matter what he needs. So we're here today in uh, Beaufort, Georgia to help clean up this home. And I mean, it's a lot of antiques and clocks. So uh, it's really interesting to try and see like the, you know, the history as, as things come, going through and evolve. We'll just keep you posted and see how things are going. Another day in paradise. <laughs> All these electronics. Like a sewing machine. Anything salvageable or things you might donate or? No, we're gonna try and scrap some stuff, but he wants to keep stuff that he thinks he can sell. So we're setting stuff to the side, but we're trying to scrap some things, donate some things, but most of it's trash, like 90% of it is. Hello, hello. How are you doing today? Good, how about you? Tired, sore, old, having a good day. <laughs> Tired, sore, and old? Yep, and having a good day. <laughs> Is your first time cleaning a horse? No, we uh, actually put in commercial floors. Brian's father and I, we put in commercial floors together. We've been working together for 22 years. So I've known Brian since he was eight. Then when he decided to take this on, I told him any time he needed a hand, give me a call. We'd get together. Is this your first time working a horse? Yes. It is? What do you think so far? Uh, <laughs> It wasn't as bad as I thought it was going to be, honestly. You see the inside? Huh? Wait, have you seen the inside? No, I haven't. I've seen pictures, but I feel like it's going to be different in person. This is my first time working with Brian, yeah. First time working with Brian? Yeah. Uh, I've known his daddy for a long time, though. I used to work with his daddy back when I was like 16, 17. Uh -huh. Doing the same thing they were doing, commercial floor. Commercial floor. Yeah, I've known him for a long time, but this is my first time helping him do this. He worked with my dad, too, for a while. 14 years? Yeah. So. 14 years. Oh, my gosh. So what was it like watching him grow up? Oh no. Oh, so we get to kill him. Whoa, whoa, whoa. <laughs> you don't need to do that. And his brother you. <laughs> running all over the jobs, hollering at each other, like he's mad at each other. <laughs> it was fun. I mean, we started, it was fun. It was we, fun for me too, you yeah. know. We, it was real fun. Yeah, you know, brothers, we argue. So, I mean, we do something the other one didn't like. You know, we would chase each other, running down a basketball court with a, a broom. But. But when we were, we were, you know, we're twins, so we're only a minute apart. I don't know if you're a twin. Knows. Yeah, we're twins, so that's why we butt heads so much. But when we were twenty, we started to uh, actually work together. So it, it's, it was just a phase. We grabbed it. I'll have to see if my brother wants to, to pop by and, and film him because he's completely different. Are you guys identical or are you fraternal? Yeah, we're fraternal. He's six inches taller and about eighty pounds bigger. Big old beard, long hair. We want to grab the door and work our way out. Yeah, I think that might be the easiest. All this going? Yeah, I guess. Yeah. What do you think of the inside? I mean, it definitely looks different in the pictures like I was talking about. Mm -hmm. What is it? It's a record player, but I think it's broken. Other than if you turn around and look on that wall behind you, that's pretty cool, so it still works. That's a phone. Don't get a dial telling none of that. Have you seen the cats yet? I think they're back in the bedrooms. You know, hiding all this noise we're making. 
Uh, I haven't seen him today, no. The one we did in Savannah, we used 10 boxes of bags. There's 32 bags of box. So, 320 bags. It was 100 yards of trash. I really wish I got that one filmed. I missed that one. It was a triple wide, 2,800 square feet. It was a lot. Even to the side, I think he wants to try and save them. What's that? Chairs? The chairs? Yeah, some of the furniture he wants to see. Hey, Doc! Is this what you wear? Doc, you could wow wow. Hey, you catch me in that, just know it's been a good day. Now the door can open. I was picking up the couch. Ah, man, it's nasty. It's like eating a mouthful of dust when I picked it up. It was a tree. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Make it snow. Yeah, we're, we're moving everything so we can go through and get what is trash out and everything. It gives the customer a chance to look at what he has. Because I know there's a couple pieces of big pieces of furniture he wants to get rid of. So we'll pull those out and just make more room. That way, as we're cleaning out the other rooms, we'll be able to put stuff where it goes. Help organize a little bit for him so it's manageable. Uh, so he can uh, take care from there. Yeah, it's got a glass case. But the case comes off, so you have to grab the, the bottom of it and it falls apart. The Edison phone with the grass. Yeah, that's the Edison on the uh, SM96810. Cool. Glad I moved my head. Man, I was hoping that was going to happen too, and I missed it. <laughs> We're through the garage, kitchen, dining, and living room. We're about to start the hallway and the three bedrooms and bathrooms. We're waiting on the dumpster to pick, be picked up behind me and then uh, dumped and then brought back. So we're going to go ahead and take a lunch break and hopefully by the time we get back, it's picked up and returned. Wait, that's a big old pile of shit. Is that what that is? I hope. I just had to squeeze through there. Then we got all the big stuff out of the way, swept everything out of the floor so we could open the door. Get my fan now. What are you trying to do in the door? Oh yeah, there is. I'm just gonna go to the bathroom. I can't tell you how many times I've used the bathroom in the dumpster like this. <laughs> downside. Yep. I was, uh, the last one they had the, the house was all uh, empty and the doors were shut. So I used the tree. Too. That's why I stop. <laughs> Anybody looking for a job where you don't work hard, please call Brian Wynn. He's hiring. He needs people that move slow. Thanks. <laughs> it's better being the bloopers. <laughs> oh, you want something for bloopers? <laughs> yeah, don't touch me. <laughs> we have our dumpster for all the trash. And then we have the little trailer for all the recyclables. So try and save as much as we can from the landfill. <laughs> so cotton candy, how you wrap it around? Mm-hmm. All way to do it. We're just gonna go everywhere. Want some cotton candy? Ah, don't eat sweet, sorry. Uh, Is it sugar free? Yeah, they are. Dang. Uh, probably 80 degrees. And you know, with a suit on, you know, 85, 90. It's not comfortable. So take short breaks, rotate out, so no no one overexerts himself. We don't want anyone to pass out. A lot of water breaks. Got the duster at home, so doing it with a broom. Improvise. Yep. So can you explain the conversation you just had with the client? Yeah. So he was asking me what to do with the floors, and I told him, well, I would sweep, you know, vacuum, get as much up as you can that way, 
Then after that, you'd have to come through with, you know, a cleaner and a mop bucket and a scrub brush and scrub the floors. And, and I told them it was going to take, so it just depends on how much is there and how well it's stuck to the ground. Uh, I told them the best thing to do is just replace them, but uh, at this point, you just try and clean them for right now. Is this a cat poop or? I think it is, yeah. Um, he had two cats for a while, and I think they were blocked from going to the litter box, so they you know, went where they had to, you know, and it ended up being everywhere in the home, so. I don't know if I had, I don't know, I spilled something out of one of them and you. some cotton candy? <laughs> some some cotton candy? I got a lot more. You gotta have some kind of moral support when you come in here with that camera. <laughs> you got this. How, what's it like working back here? Um, so far? Small, confined, hot, dingy. There's a ton of words we could use to describe it. Mm -hmm. But... Just something to do on a day off. <laughs> I got a full-time job. I don't need this. No. <laughs> so we're trying to get some of this moved to where we can shut the drawers, move this table, and we can get some pe uh, two people to work on this side, and two start going towards the bathroom to clean up the floor. There you go. Man, you got a brain. My little five pounds. <laughs> <laughs> How's it going up there? Pretty good. We made a little bit of room, so I think everything's going to fit in the two dumpsters. So I don't think we need another one. Nice. So we'll be done today? Yeah, we're almost done for the day. I think we got like an hour left, maybe. You know how to catch a polar bear? How do you catch a polar bear? So you go up and cut a big old hole in the ice, right? And then you put a seal right in the middle. It's dead. And when he comes up to eat the seal, you kick him right in the ice hole. Right yeah. <laughs> right See, stupid people tell your kids don't have it because you tell your It's a record player, an eight-track player, and a radio all-in-one. You got your picture. Mm -hmm. That's enough for that. That'd be $10 for watching. I don't think so. I don't think that's good. I've been out for about an hour untangling cords so we can uh, get to the floor. So we just got the bathroom left, some of the master bed, and then uh, the other room, and we'll be done. So we, we moved the furniture from in here and, and the clock from in here so we could get a path to the bathroom. Removed all those clocks so we can actually clean everything. All the cords were uh, tangled up so we weren't able to clean the floor. They were everywhere. So we had to go in one by one, unplug them, wrap them up, take them to the next room. So we're hoping to leave them in the next room for a while and he has time to go through and sort through them. And in the living room, it, you know, it gives him time and space to get like a new couch or a new chair so he can start to furnish his house after he's ready to improve it. So that's been having your own business, you can make your own hour. Hell, I get to do that and I have my own business. Okay, cool. Good for you. Yeah, well, you know. I ain't supposed to say that shit in front of you, am I? No, not in front of me. Maybe oh. behind me. Uh, what? <laughs> So how are you feeling right now? It's the end of the day. Just another day. How am I supposed to feel? I'm exhausted. There you go. That's better. I don't know if I'm going to be able to make it home without falling asleep. Dying of thirst. I mean, maybe you're going to have to have something to eat. It is so rough. Is this where I make crying sounds to? I mean, I guess. <laughs> All the time. Can't take him anywhere. <laughs> yeah, in the day one, we did really well today. Had uh, myself and three technicians. What we had to do that we haven't had to do before was untangle all the cords. That was what held us up the most today. We made really good progress with uh, uh, scooping up the, the trash and bagging it. We're on uh, starting box four, and um, tomorrow we're expecting to be half a day with uh, you know three technicians to finish it up. So far, how is the client feeling about today's work? He's just shell shocked. It's what a difference a day can make. Um, he he is happy, uh, but at the same time, it's concerning. You know, didn't realize it was this bad. So it's uh, get him on the right track. Hey everybody, this is Brian at, uh, at uh, Athens, Georgia, Spalding Decon. We're here today at uh, Buford, Georgia, at the home. This is day two. This is a family issue that uh, we we hope to help him with. So we're going to finish up the home. Uh, we left off in the master bath and bedroom and we have one more bedroom to get to after that 
And then after we're done with all the trash and removing that, uh, we are going to help him pack up as much as he can and move it to his storage unit um, because he wants to go through and sell his items. So hopefully uh, we'll be able to finish up the day strong and uh, help him get to where he needs to be. Yeah, so I, I just called the customer. He said he was caught in traffic leaving work. So uh, we are uh, just you know getting ready you know for when he gets here so there's the least amount of doubt time as possible. And uh, we just get started. We only have to work. Uh, four more hours between all three of my techs, including myself. Uh, so, you know, we just want to get it done for him. You know, we have a limited time now because he's got to work, then come home to this. So it's just uh, trying to get it taken care of for him as quick cool as we can. Uh, I guess we're going to start with the gas up to roll up clock. Yeah, that's fine. My name is Trey. Uh, I've been working for Brian for about a month now and I've known him for five or six years. Um, today we're working on this house over here and I'm not sure what I'm expecting. I know he's working on it. Uh, this is my first day at it. He was here a couple days prior. I'm um, just ready to get to it and get after it. Have you ever worked a horde before? Uh, I've had. I've worked three hordes with Brian um, all over uh, his territory, up north, down south. Uh, and so just ready to get started. I love working for him, love working for Brian, love doing what he does. Are you in the bathroom? Yes. Some of the clock from the bathroom still has a couple more. Just gotta take them out so we can uh, get to the floor so it's a lot easier and we don't risk breaking all the clocks. Yeah, that's between the wall. So far, how's day two going? Not bad. Since we got everything out yesterday, it's pretty easy to move, maneuver around. It'll be easier to get a lot more done. So I think the, the time that we have left, we'll be able to get everything done. So we are going to take everything off the bed. We're going to use all the small clocks, wrap the cords around so they don't get them tangled up. And as we take them off the bed, we're going to take them straight to his, the back of his truck. So he can take it to the storage unit just so he can start sorting stuff out. Uh, he had to get one just so we can spread things out, find out what he needs to keep, what he needs to get rid of, what he can sell, what he can donate, what he can re uh, recycle. So just trying to help him be uh, organized so we can uh, help him best we can. So sir, what made you get into um, biohazard cleaning? I'm not sure. Uh, Brian told me about it. Uh, he told me about like, what he does. Um, and I love Brian as a person. Uh, and I really just trying helping people out. I mean, just finished up a job. Uh, whether it be four hours or 24 hours, uh, just that instant satisfaction and seeing them happy with the uh, progress we made and the work that we get done. feels like if you drop it, you're going to break it. So, uh, yeah, it's delicate and we're just having to pull the cords. You know, you're not supposed to, but we're having to do that to find where they're at so we can untangle them and unplug them and uh, get them out of here. And Trey, so you're bringing things out to the client, right? I am. They're grabbing the cords, grabbing the clogs, grabbing stuff up, and I'm bringing it out. I'm either in the bed of the truck or putting in the dumpster wherever it needs to go. Need some brownies? 2018. Nice. Man, if I wasn't hungry. I mean, if I was hungry. Just more brownies? You eat one, I'll eat one. Oh, for, for how much you gonna pay me for them? I mean, that was just fair. You eat one, I eat one. I ain't gonna pay you. Yeah, I know. Well, how much you want for one then? 150. Whoa! Yeah, I thought you were gonna sell it. 40 bucks. When, what, what date is it from? 2020. It, oh, it is? Yeah. You're lying. Let me see it. No. <laughs> I'm going to ask Trey when he gets here. I think he'll do it. Yeah, so he fun. puts anything in his mouth. Well, let me rephrase that. <laughs> he puts certain things in his mouth. Usually food related. Let me specify. <laughs> How much to eat a brownie? I don't know. Three hundred bucks. What? Yeah, man, she said 150 you I told, that one. I told the camera that you'd put anything in your mouth for free. I was like, oh, I got to watch what I say. You <laughs> <laughs> to open it? No, I ain't that. I let her break a tooth. Is it a knife again? Yeah, my price just went up. Yeah, no. That's a brick. No, I was close, but not after feeling it, no. <laughs> One of the guys I worked with my dad years ago when I worked with him, we convinced him between seven people, we convinced him to eat a beetle by this long. The whole carcass, everything. Yeah, no thanks. He yeah. ate it for 20 bucks. But would you do it for 20 bucks? Oh, no. That, I was just happy he was doing it for 20 bucks. It was a good time. June 16, 2019. How much? I, I, I had to feel him first. <laughs> Looks like there's a roach in here. Oh yeah, I'll pass. Man, I'm tempted. 
Two. But it, this is my insurance, so I'm not letting you get sick it on me. It is your insurance. Is it from the bathroom? Yeah, it's from the bathroom. That's not even a scrub brush. I couldn't find the yellow ones. Uh, one done right, you do it yourself. I can grab a straw brew. Uh, <laughs> They're right next to each other on the ground. <laughs> it's okay though. I guess I need to show them the difference between the brooms. Yeah, first try. The scrub broom. First try. The scrub broom. Head and box spring, flip it over yep. toward the wall. And then um, we'll get everything up from under it and then we'll put those back and then we'll sweep up the, the floor again. Yep. Your year on it? 1912. April 16th, 1912. What was going on back in the day? 1912? <laughs> <laughs> That's what it says on here. Pre World War One. It's over 100 years. Mm -hmm. yeah. He has a Titanic uh, poster, you say? Yeah, he's got a couple. We well, got that one. There's one in the that's other right. room that's one down. Mm -hmm. Oh, oh yeah, yeah. The, even this backside is talking about the Titanic. It seems like this whole newspaper is about the Titanic. Jared Reap in Texas, Flower Mound. While we were at the convention, he wanted to bet that, a little more of an agreement, that once. He got twenty thousand in a month. He's gonna get a tattoo of Maggie the Maggot on it. He asked me if I was gonna do it, and I told him, man, right now with my job lined up, I'm gonna be over that. So how about forty grand? So if he makes twenty grand in a month, and I make forty grand in a month, we're both gonna get tattoos of Maggie the Maggot on us. Still trying to find out where to put it. If anyone has any ideas, please let me know. So I'm going to go with him, unload his truck at the storage unit. Uh, if you put the uh, box spring and the mattress back on the bed, we'll get the cat from that room, put him in here. See, he's calling it. I'm ready to be pet. Uh, put him in here, shut the door, and you know, shut that door too, and then uh, we'll work on getting that bedroom done for the last little bit for the day. How do you feel after uh, finishing this room? I feel myself. accomplished. It looks a lot better compared to what it originally looks like. The whole mound of trash over there and everything. It feels good. I feel good for him. He seems a lot happier, so he's willing to do a lot more. That makes me feel better. It's a bed. You want to come with me? Sweet. I know she's pregnant, so I don't want to pick her up. Yeah. Okay, well, you did that on your own. How tight is it in there? It's pretty tight. It's pretty tight. I mean, you can't. Definitely not as tight as like the hall and the living room was at first. I'm just trying to clear out the doorway so we can get in and out. Yeah, you can do anything else. I mean, we can't get back to you right now. Okay. Yeah, the top is perfect. Okay. Okay. The bottom is flat. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 All you can do is type. <laughs> so everything in here? He didn't tell me to keep anything, so... I walk 26,000 steps a day. This is over 10 miles. Non-stop for 10 hours walking. Walking around a dock. This is a lot easier. Walking around a dock? Yeah, I was in logistics, right? So we had an open dock where we, uh, we brought uh, back trucks up. We would unload them. Put the freight where it went to the customer and repeat. So as I was walking around the dock, it ended up being over 10 miles a day. The most I've ever walked in a day was 30,000 steps. It is, it is rough after a while. So John, are all these trash? Okay. All except that. I think I found the, the rest of that when I was down at the storage unit. Okay. That thing on the bottom. If not, I'll trash it myself. So we went to uh, the storage unit and a customer wanted to take some stuff over there to help sort out so he can uh, actually manage he has some people coming to look at some fans so uh it's kind of a, a good close location for him to 
try and sell some of the stuff. So we went there and stacked the fans up and uh, put the, all the clocks that we took over there into different areas. So it's getting more organized to where he can manage it himself. Over time, he can sell everything. We're getting ready to throw some stuff away. Let's stack them in the living room. I'll take them over there. I ain't come take them tonight. It's so exciting. More fans. Uh, another newspaper says Nixon quits at uh, August 9th. Oh, that's, uh, yes, that's, um, Daryl Nixon. We're wrapping up day two. There is a lot of clocks and fans still here. They're antiques. Uh, these are items that he wants to sell. Uh, there's a few items that he's trying to find parts with. So we've done what we can. We've gotten all the trash out. We went through the entire home, helped him condense his collection up down a third. And um, we've gotten all the trash out, so we'll, we'll be out of here in just a, a couple minutes. And then um, he is going to have us come back and uh, do a deep clean uh, on uh, bathrooms in the kitchen. At first, he's very overwhelmed. Uh, now he, he's really happy. He's he's knowing that I see the light at the end of the tunnel. I can get rid of some of this stuff. He's letting go more and more as we were working today. Um, he was actually the one throwing stuff away, so that's a really good sign. He's He's getting things taken care of and uh, you know, just condensing down what he doesn't need and realizing that. The cool things we found today, um, you know, we, we, you know, the clocks and the fans, it's just the eye catcher at first, but we were digging through the bedroom under, under the bed, there was a box, and that box had a newspaper from 1912 about the Titanic, April 16th, 1912. So most of the newspaper was all about that Titanic, and that was really cool to, to find. Uh, especially something that's over 100 years old. So, you know, that was the most interesting. And, uh, you know, we'll definitely post some pictures on Instagram. My Instagram is at Spalding Decon, A T H for Athens. But uh, for right now, this is all he wants us to do. So we, we gave him all we had uh, for these two days. You know, thank you very much. Thanks for watching, guys. Don't forget to like, share, subscribe, and ring that bell to be notified of the next episode. For more information, visit any of our locations.